welcome everybody to this CCI seminar. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, which is going to be Stephen Matthews. He's going to be presenting work that he has done over this summer on his MSc CIR course, Computation Intelligence and Robotics, here at De Montfort. Uh, prior to that MSc, he actually completed the um, Bachelor's of Science, Computer Science? Yeah. Straight Computer Science here again at DMU. So he's DMU all the way through his academic career so far. Um, hopefully we'll get him a PhD place in carry on. So uh, I'll leave it to you, please. Hi. Um, so this, I'm going to talk to you about the work I've conducted for my master's thesis for the past four months. Uh, the work is titled, An Integrated Stereo Vision Logic Controller for Following Vehicles in an Unstructured Environment. Okay, so the outline of this uh, presentation, I'll present an overview of the work, so what this is, uh, why I'm doing it, a little bit of uh, history behind the work as well. Uh, I'll then discuss the design of these systems as well, so how the parts work and what they are. Uh, I'll then present the uh, method for experiment to experimentation of the work, and also some results of this work as well. I'll then draw some conclusions from this work, which I'll discuss, and uh, finally have an opportunity to talk questions as well. Okay, so what is this work? Well, the idea is um, vehicle following of automobiles. Vehicle following can be applied to various different types <coughs> of uh, transport, such as helicopters perhaps, or even submarines or aeroplanes, uh, for instance, formation flying uh, with the red arrows. This work focuses specifically on adaptive cruise control of automobiles. And the idea is that one vehicle on the road will follow another vehicle behind it while maintaining a safe distance between the vehicles. So to do this, we've used stereo vision to identify the leading vehicle and identify the location as well. I've then used fuzzy logic uh, because we're working in an unstructured environment, so there's much uh, uncertainty present. And also there's uh, an element of uh, inaccuracy with the measurements that we're taking using stereo vision as well. Um, I've modelled the cruise control on the Pioneer 3 multi-terrain robot. These are four-wheel robots that consist, uh, which turn by using skid steer mechanisms. So this is um, what the work is. Now the motivation for this is, when I decided to do the thesis, I thought I'd like to incorporate something I'm interested in and apply my knowledge to that. So I'm quite interested in cars, I enjoy watching the TV and driving them. Uh, so decided to apply my knowledge to this to try and enhance the safety a little bit. Uh, by maintaining a safe distance between the two vehicles is what I hope to achieve. It's also quite uh, state-of-the-art technology as well. Uh, the first occurrence of this technology on vehicles on the road was in 1998 with Mercedes-Benz S-Class vehicle. This was able to sense the vehicle in front and change the speed accordingly. Uh, now it's starting to become more common in cars. For example, the new Ford Monday this year has this technology in it as well. I uh, also saw an article on BBC News a couple of weeks ago about uh, driverless fleet of taxis in Devonshire. Uh, this, they're hoping to pioneer this technology there. Uh, the idea here is that you just hop into a taxi and it will autonomously uh, guide you to your destination. And they actually use uh, vehicle following as part of this uh, service. Also, the Defence Advanced Research Projects Agency in America conducts a challenge every year, known as the Grand Challenge, and more recently this year, the Urban Challenge, where autonomous vehicles uh, navigate across terrains. Um, this sort of shows the, uh, the research getting into this area and how it is uh, current and up to date. And then finally, I wanted to do something challenging. I wanted to push myself and do a substantial piece of work in this area. So set the challenge to do this. So this is why, why I've tackled this, this work. So a little bit of a historical angle to this work is the first implementations of this were very simple mechanisms where the vehicle was locked into a constant speed on a mechanical device. Um, you can think of this as sort of putting a brick on your accelerator, drop on the car, and letting it travel at constant speed. Um, this then progressed further to use proportional controllers during the 1950s. Uh, this allowed the vehicle to uh, change its speed 
So, for example, if you're going up a hill, uh, it would account for the uh, forces acting against this and increase the speed to maintain the set speed. 1983 is when uh, the first research into adaptive cruise control came about. This was conducted by Nissan, um, and they used fuzzy logic for, for this, so the same idea here. Then the first commercial application I've mentioned already was the Mercedes-Benz S-Class in 1998. So this is a bit of an introduction to the, to the project. Uh, I'm now going to discuss the design of the system. We'll start with the software architecture. So the design of the system consists of three concurrent processes. Uh, the first one is the vision. This is the stereo vision camera consisting of two individual cameras to identify the leading vehicle and its location, so how far it is away. I've then used a pan tilt unit uh, to track the leading vehicle as well. The camera sits on top of this unit and it's pointed towards the uh, vehicle. Uh, then there's a fuzzy control process which actually controls the movement of the vehicle, so the direction and the speed. Uh, this little diagram here <coughs> uh, showing how these processes interact. The vision process uh, communicates its distance to the controllers and also communicates the position, the angle of the uh, vehicle via the pan tilt unit to the controllers. So this is the general, the overall architecture of the system and how the different processes work. Uh, they communicate by inter-process communication, uh, more specifically POSIX shared memory. So a segment of memory is allocated in RAM and all the processes uh, read from that source. Uh, so this is how they, how they share this information. So I'm going to describe the processes in a little bit more detail to explain how they work. Um, so what are the challenges with the vision process? Well the first one is it's got to be able to recognise the leading robot. Uh, to do this, we need to be able to uniquely identify it in the environment, so it's only tracking the same point every time. And it has to be have low computational complexity as well, so it needs to be simple uh, to reduce the amount of uh, processes. So for this, we've used the recognition of the pink ball. Uh, pink ball is relatively uncommon, naturally uh, occurring colour in our environment. Uh, I've assumed this within our experiments. So it's the only uh, pink object in the, in the scene. The second challenge for the vision process is to calculate the distance to the, to the ball. So the idea here is we have an image of the environment, a 2D scene, and then we reconstruct that to produce a 3D environment. So I'm aiming to uh, identify the 3D location of the ball, the single point. And this is a picture here of the uh, point grey research from the vision camera that I have used. So now I'm going to describe the actual algorithm behind the image processing in a bit more detail. So to begin with, uh, two images are captured, one for each camera in the stereo vision camera. These are then converted from the RGB colour space to the HSV. <coughs> Um, the reason for doing this is because the technique for identifying the pink ball is to threshold the colour. So the RGB represents colour in three different channels. And the HSV colour space represents it in one, the hue channel. So by thresholding one channel only, we're reducing the computational complexity. While doing this, I've also noticed that thresholding the saturation as well actually produces a good silhouette of the ball from the image. Um, so I've actually thresholded two channels, the hue and the saturation. Then the fourth step, we've actually combined these with uh, logical and operation. Uh, and the effect of doing this is to combine two silhouettes of the image and remove bits of noise around, around the image. This didn't always remove all of the noise in the image, so I've then performed uh, erosion on the image by removing points around the uh, silhouettes. 